Just take it easy. Don't do anything rash. Take it easy. I don't like that face. <laughs> Just back off. What are you doing? Oh! What's <laughs> your punch my That hurt, okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> hey, Naptop here, and what you just saw was a little cut scene or a blooper from the little short film, The Watermelon. And it was a test film that I made years back, finally got around to editing it, and I'm sitting in front of my editor right now because I want to show you guys exactly the method to the madness because it's not as random as it might look. Well, it's pretty random, but if you haven't watched the film, check it out. The link will be in the description. I'll wait. Oh, you're good? You're not going to click it? You've already seen it? All right, whatever the case. The reason this film was created was I got my Canon 60D that day and I wanted to try out some stuff just with the camera settings and stuff like that. So I set up the camera on a tripod and just shot a couple angles and we just developed this improv scene. You know that I've done Premiere Pro tutorials in the past and I still use Premiere Pro, but I'm slowly transitioning away from it and trying to dive in full on Final Cut Pro X. Those of you that are like, oh cool, we're gonna learn a little bit more about the behind the scenes. You're the ones I'm talking to. How you doing? How you doing out there? You ever use Final Cut Pro X? Let's check it out. Now I'm really new at this and I spent a lot of time Google searching a lot of shortcuts and other things like that, but I've had the help from my friend Eric Monroe He's been helping me out with uh, just getting comfortable and understanding how the software works, where the shortcut keys are, how things are set up, and where are my bins? This is sort of like a podcast live stream all together, wrapped up into an edited little project with screen capture. These are the clips I have set up, and you can see them all here in thumbnail view. Do list view, there's all the different clips, and these aren't organized in any specific way. You can see my timeline here. These are the little excerpts that I, these are just outtakes and stuff like that over here, but this is the main movie with a little color grading on it. And you can see how condensed and nice that is. And that's not because I'm a good editor. That's because that's a compound clip. Let's get into it by double clicking on it. This is the actual, <laughs> this is the actual edit. Do you see that? Look at that. Whew. That is pretty crazy. Now, my biggest struggle with Final Cut Pro X, and I'm just gonna call it FP, how, how do you say it fast? FPX, PSC, I don't know. Anyways, I got very comfortable with Premiere Pro's audio setup and putting transitions and stuff like that. And here I just haven't, haven't gotten that down yet. So I'm just kind of staggering them and stacking them. But if we zoom in here, you can see what I've done where I do this little fade right here. You see this little fade? So it fades up and fades down. And I know in Premiere, you just do a little audio transition. And I can do that in here. I just, I'm still learning. So it's it's more difficult to get into that option to let me do that. I can't really stack these up and just drop transitions in between them unless I create like a compound thing or something. And you can see a bunch of L and J cuts, how these overlap. This is some very basic editing stuff but it's stuff I don't ever get to do. And if this is sloppy and you have a better way, leave a comment below and let me know because I'm still learning how to do this stuff in Final Cut. In Premiere, I would just butt everything together and just drop little uh, audio transitions between each one, little constant power transitions and everything would kind of smooth up. But with these L and J cuts that I have done here, the audio conversation sounds really integrated. This is what's so cool about being able to upload stuff like this to the internet and then get feedback. There's just a few comments about the edit itself and stuff like that. And a couple of them are this idea that it's like, oh wow, this is such a fun little quick video. And that was the original idea that I would shoot it and edit it and upload it one day, a couple hours. This edit took me two days. I, I edited this for like six hours both days. So what is that, 12 hours almost of editing on this little skit and this is why pre-production. There wasn't any. So all of the script writing that I did, I did inside of the editor. So I have dialogue and you can see here these little green sections. Those are clips that I favorited. So now I can go in and these are all my favorite clips. Little Final Cut Pro X thing that I love. But as we go through here and watch this dialogue, there's just random cuts of conversation back and forth. And that's one of the reasons it took so long to edit this. And it's one of the reasons why it takes so long to edit most of my videos I'm finding out is because my lack of pre-planning, those hours or minutes I could have spent before I started recording, I spend hours in the editing trying to rearrange clips and tell a story that really never existed in that form 
which is sort of a, the fun part, you know. For me, I like going through and kind of figuring out as if it's a puzzle, but the fun wears off after about hour three of a little three minute skit about a watermelon. <laughs> you showed up with a melon at my house. Stop, you're scratching it. I gotta eat this. In the editing, there's dialogue with on camera speaking. So if you listen to this clip right here. Stop, you're scratching it. I gotta eat this. There's an airplane flying overhead. Well, the segment where I respond, this clip right here, there's no airplane because I shot that a few minutes later. So in the editing, this is what's so cool about being able to practice this. This is a challenge trying to get that airplane sound to, to be consistent and to intercut very well. And so what I have here is that airplane sound continuing. I don't know how to solo this. <laughs> I'm still learning. But if I could solo this, that would be awesome. Can I solo this? How do I solo? Let's go to search. How do I solo? Oh, that's how. So let's solo the clip. Oh, that's the <laughs> that's the watermelon sound. All right, how do I turn off that solo? It's hard to hear because I have the mic set up to record the computer audio. But that is the airplane, just introducing the airplane sound. This is my watermelon. And I'm gonna eat it right now because it's so hot out. We're both gonna die of thirst arguing about this. I'm gonna it. die with watermelon in my belly. There was all kinds of problems because there was no pre-scripting. We're talking over each other, so there were so many takes that we couldn't use. But here's the main thing that I wanted to see, and I learned a lot, which is my camera angles. So I have this side shot with both of us that I tried to set up pretty even. There's the close, I would say a medium shot of subject one. This is a slight over the shoulder setup. This is another angle that's not quite over the shoulder, but it leaves me off camera. So I, you can, I could intercut my voice talking off camera and you wouldn't know. So there's my different angles. There's the low side shot and there's the higher one. I like the lower one because if you can see when we're both standing there, it's just not that interesting looking, but that puts us both at this like hero type of shot. I like that little lens flare over here, it looks really cool. But what I found was during this over the shoulder right here, all of the stuff Aaron, the other guy here was saying, you could see his mouth and so it wasn't a good over the shoulder because when I'm trying to overlay other audio he's not actually saying, you could totally tell and you might have seen this in movies sometimes when you see the other actor and they see their mouth still moving or it's saying different words. That's because the angle isn't set up that hides it. Like I should have kept it a little further back. So here's what's really cool. I learned a lot about my camera setups and this is something very simple that could have been fixed and now it will be. I delete this so we can see these two clips side by side. I shot this over the shoulder that I thought looked pretty good but as you can see when I intercut these two shots together it kind of has a weird look because it's the same shot, two people, it's just changed just slightly. And so intercutting those together didn't work. So what I had to do was put this close-up shot in to then reestablish me being able to jump to a weird over-the-shoulder shot. So we'll watch that like that. Hey, stop. Stop. And I really like that watermelon sound. Those are added effects that we did. We just did some on-site uh, Foley work with that squeaky noise. Are you guys learning anything from all this rambling? I hope this is actually concise in some way. I know in my mind I'm thinking about all the stuff I wanted to talk about earlier this morning. And especially just having gotten off this edit, I realized the main things I learned were I got to think, well, first I got a pre-production. I need pre-production. I got to plan out. Also, I need to shoot way more cutaway shots. I didn't have any cutaways. The only shot I had as a cutaway was this close-up shot of these POVs. And I really wasn't planning on using these when I got to watch them here in the editor. But because those POVs were the only shots I had during that part of the movie, I had to use them. And I kind of wish I had some tripoded shots from the side of just like close-ups of the watermelon or close-ups of just a reaction shot of each one of us just sort of sitting there just being like looking off camera. Reaction shots without any talking at all, but every shot had talking. I learned how two shots that have the same composition, just slightly altered angle, aren't going to edit very well together at all. <laughs> And I learned that it is really hard to edit audio outside where there's crickets, 
birds and locusts just chirping away. Shooting room tone or just that ambient background and just a, a nice little 30 second or a minute long of just background noise. No movement, no other talking, just a baseline to help me fill in some of the spaces in the dialogue. I learned that if you're shooting a video or a film to practice editing or composition and all this stuff that I'm doing, try to do it in a, a short time. Like, I don't know, within the same week or the same month or the same year instead of five years later. But it's still a learning experience. I'm glad I spent some time doing it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me ramble on about this practice project. I'm realizing really quickly that the only way to get better at this stuff is to spend time doing it. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. A lot of you guys I follow online share great stuff and I love watching it, but I realize that I'm spending too much time watching and being a critic of and not enough time actually getting in there and doing it myself, learning what things I like to do, learning what things I don't like to do. And more than anything, I wanna have fun and be able to document memories and stories in a way that I imagine them to be. Long story short, I'm a free time filmmaker and that's one of the reasons I started the Instagram channel. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. If you guys are using Final Cut Pro X, let me know if there's any links or if you offer any tutorials or videos on your channel, send me a link so I can check them out. I love learning more about this stuff. I'm learning that the best way to get better at it is to purposely use it over and over again. You can see some of my projects over here. I think I've put together and posted a lot of these. I haven't done this fish-eyed lens video yet. But these are the projects I've been working on. I've been committing time to it. It's been very frustrating and hard, but I like it. So thanks again for spending some time. Knob Top, Final Cut Pro X, practice project. Go make something. <laughs>